Yo, what is up folks, ChevyG here with a Outlaws at Thunder Junction set review focusing on Pioneer and Explorer, the MTG Arena equivalent. Gonna go through everything from the main set and then go through big everything from the big score afterwards. So if you're looking for cards from that, that'll be right at the end. Uh, Starting off with white, I'll go through colour by colour and with Archangel of Tights. This is a reprint for Pioneer, but a brand new card to the MTG Arena client. Is a pretty cool one, really nice for devotion, especially if you want to play into the angel theme. Uh, every now and again, a card gets reprinted that kind of like people are like, oh yeah, we haven't actually tried that in this format. Uh, and so hey, maybe it shows up on Arena. I think it'd be quite interesting to play around with. Next up, we have Aven Interrupter. One white, white for a T2 with Flash and Flying. Enter the Battlefield Exile target spell. Uh, spell comes plotted, but then two more to cast. So he's like, hey, I'm going to basically put a delay on this. You can cast it later on. Uh, now, spells your opponent's cast from graveyards or from exile costing two more to cast is a static ability and separate. So if you have something like a spell queller and you're playing these in the same deck, for example, in Pioneer Explorer, then hey, uh, even if they kill your spell queller, they still have to use to pay more mana to then cast the spell, which is actually pretty nice synergy. Um, and so hey, doesn't fit into like spirits per se, but those maybe maybe blue white flash um, stuff like that could be quite cool. So to refocus my camera. The power with Claim Jumper here, it's being a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, like ends the battlefield, find a land, it's not like a unique effect or anything, but the power here is that you can find planes that are not just basics. You can go find a Triome, fix your mana, fix your Leyline Binding, etc, etc, and then potentially, this is like a ramp, like if your opponent's doing a ramp here with their own, you get to find a couple of lands. It takes like all of your mana. So I think it's pretty a powerful one effect, um, especially in decks where like you want to play things like Collector Company maybe, um, and you don't want to have like a super high land count, hey, like, your opponent's going to get ahead of you, we get a claim jumper to play, you get a couple of lands, all of a sudden you can like, hey, you've got some mana sinks, dust watch recruiter, that kind of thing. You've got some nice stuff to do. Final showdown here is an interesting one. Because we have a ton of really good white rats, like Farewell, obviously Supreme Verdict, uh, Sunfall, also really good. We've got Depopulate, there's, there's a ton of different white rats in the format, even things like, I guess you could count like Temporary like that as well. Um, but Final Showdown has some kind of unique abilities on it. Uh, firstly, like obviously, so it's the first free card we're looking at here, so white to cast, and then for each effect you want to use it to pay the cost. So if you just want to use this draw of creatures, it's a six mana wrath, which is expensive. However, it is an instant speed, six mana wrath, which is itself quite powerful. It cleans up mana lands, you can do your imprints end step, so much stuff there. It's also quite flexible. You can make a creature control indestructible with one of the modes. Pretty handy. You've got something you want to keep alive. But I think the most powerful thing that this does that none of the other wraths do is it turns off creatures' abilities. If you've played with like Dress Down in Modern, you can do this in response as well to your opponent casting something. Hey, they think they're going to get some triggers or something. All of a sudden, they don't. Really, really unique effect, and that's the bit where I think it's really, really interesting. Um, and so maybe this crops up as like a one of. Um, having one in your collection is probably a good idea. Hydean is an interesting one. We've got some effects a bit like this in the format. However, uh, the two main things I think. Firstly, not a creature. Um, so can't just be removed. And secondly, it's like a straight up removal. It's not just saying, hey, I'm limiting you to only one non-creature spell. It's saying you can't cast more than one spell each turn. Uh, and this in particular will affect where you have ways to bounce a spell back to your opponent's hand. Um, playing your opponent's turn really well. Again, we were looking before at the Avon and talking about Spell Queller. Those kind of effects get really, really powerful when your opponent's limited to one spell each turn and can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to remove it. You play spells on their turn, they've cast their spell, can't do anything. Uh, and yeah, the fourth and a red to sacrifice it is some awesome upside if you're going those colors. Any target as well. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Maybe just a cyborg card. Duelist of the Mind, the Nathan Stoyer and the Daytona card. This card's really, really cool. One in a blue, X3. Uh, Flying and Vigilance, so it gets to block, which is nice. It doesn't tap, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't vulnerable to things like Wandering Emperor. But power equal to the number of cards you've drawn at this turn. And whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card if you discard, but that triggers once per turn. All the commit a crime abilities seem to trigger once um, per turn. That's, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, we've seen like Proft in standards. Um, uh, Doomwake's been playing a ton of that, doing really well with it. Uh, we've seen other facts like that. But commit a crime, draw a card. Uh, obviously you're looting, but you're powering up as well. Um, in combination with a few other things, like can be really powerful. Obviously plays like is exactly the same kind of stat line as Ledger Shredder, um, but kind of go into some of the same decks. Whether we'll see like one of them over the other one. Obviously it's once per turn, but if you think the same way with Ledger Shredder, it's less for commitment in terms of cards. Um, and then also obviously you can trigger on both players' turns uh, yourself, which is really, really nice. Uh, and so you're like, hey, if there's a deck that wants a bunch of those kind of effects, uh, Kind of like Phoenixless Phoenix, maybe. Um, or like Blue Red Prowess. These are really interesting stuff here, especially because it does get to attack and block. Um, and it's already kind of like at base level, it's going to do some stuff. 
Uh, the fact that you can be like, all right, hey, instead of my legend you're just having to sit here on defense, you can go, okay, I'll poke him with it. Um, hey, neat. Okay, next up, Jace Reawakened. Uh, blue, blue Planeswalker. Two mana Planeswalker, three loyalty, uh, but you can't cast it during your first, second, and third turns of the game. Uh, plus one, draw a card, then discard. Plus one, exile a non-line card with mana value three or less. Your hand, if you do, it becomes plotted. Uh, if you have a card that's plotted, any following turn, you can then cast it for free. Um, pretty powerful, pretty powerful. Uh, and then minus six, until end of turn, or whatever you cast a spell, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Okay, all neat. The power here, and the reason we're talking about it, is about the plotted ability. Um, well, two things, but first, the plotted ability. Uh, you can use this with Tibble and Valky um, to get Tibble into play uh, very, very early in the game. The limitation here, though, is that you can't cast it during your, your first, second, third turns of the game. Importantly, that says your first, second, or third turns of the game. Uh, I've played a bit with Modern Blue Devotion, and one of the cards that people are excited about with Jace is Leyline of Anticipation, because uh, it lets you cast it on your opponent's turn, in which case you can cast it on your opponent's turn too, untap with it, immediately plot something, all of a sudden you've got like a Valky, you've got Tibalt Valky coming down on your turn three, way, way before you would normally be able to do that. And that's kind of why I think the card's pretty, pretty powerful. Whether there's a good show with that, I've posted and I have a video up on Modern Blue Devotion. Um, you can do some pretty wild stuff there. Uh, it's a case of like, hey, is any of this stuff powerful enough? Really interesting, really interesting. Or only like the, one of the most exciting cards in the set in terms of like, I wanna see what I can do with it. Next up, we have three steps ahead. Uh, blue, modal, flexible counter spell. Uh, obviously spree again, so blue and then pay for each mode you want to use. So one in a blue cat target spell makes it a cancel. Pretty expensive. But the upside here is that hey maybe I'll play like a bunch of uh no more lies and then a couple of these and these are a bit more flexible. Um so the other modes, three mana, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. Okay, already like torrential gay hulk, Whoa, let's go. Um or like plus two, draw two cards and discard a card. Both like hey, fairly flexible. You pay five mana until you get to cat or something and then draw and discard like it scales really nicely into the late game. Um, maybe there's something good for you to copy that you've got in play. Again, Trenchal Gay Hawk's like living to dream, but there are some other interesting things. Into black with Forsaken Miner. Uh, black for a 2-2, can't block, but whenever you commit a crime, you can pay black, and if you do, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Committing a crime, targeting their opponent, your opponent, target anything they control, all cards of the graveyard. So Chaos Spells, things like Thought Seize, just all these things, um, you know, again, exiling from graveyards, like Graveyard Trespasser, that counts. Commits crimes. Uh, and so like mono black aggro is a archetype we've not seen a ton of even with the re the unbanning of smuggler's copter and bringing it to arena as well for, for explorer um we've not really seen a ton of it it was one of the decks that was really popular early on in pioneer and one of the decks that kind of like contributed towards smuggler's copter getting banned this is a cool new tool obviously things that you can loot away with smuggler's copter then get back to your graveyard already pretty nice and you're probably going to have a bunch of ways to commit crimes to your deck between things like Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, all that kind of stuff, as well as like creature triggers on actual creatures as well. We've not seen a ton yet of like, oh, how easy is it? Like if I've got like a bunch of commit crime cards, how is it to ha always have them enabled for when I need them? We'll see. Insatiable Avarice. So another spree card. So three mana to search your library for a card, put that card on top. Okay. Um, alternatively, black, black, black to draw three cards and lose three life. That is target player. Hey, we can we can you can, can burn them out with it. Um, but hey, that's like a painful truths style effect. Um, or alternatively, combine the two, pay five mana and do both. Um, the vampiric tutor like put a card on top. There are a few instances where that's pretty useful. The vampiric tutor element of the card I think is okay. Uh, it's a fact that it's like not as good in pioneer as it would be in older formats. And also three mana is kind of the point when you're like, okay, yeah, like obviously. Like, well, tutors, four mana, is on top. It's effectively kind of doing the same thing, so you need to be able to draw the card to use it. Unless you have something that lets you cast off your library or whatever. But all this is there now. Ooh. The real thing here is that, like, three, ma three mana for three cards is, like, not too bad of a rate. And having a bunch of upside on it means, like, hey, the being able to potentially do the five mana mode and, like, tutor something, draw some cards, um, really good. Shoot the Sheriff. We got a new, like, Doom Blade effect. Um... It's pretty good. Every, everyone thinks it's pretty good. We'll see how many like times the assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, warlocks actually come up. Um, for now, looks really good. All right, into red with highway robbery. Uh, pretty interesting card. One in a red, you may discard a card or sacrifice a land. If you do, you draw two cards, and then just plot for one and a red. Uh, note that discarding is not a cost here, so if it gets counted, you don't get to keep the card. Uh, but also, like if you wanted to use it as a discard outlet, you then wouldn't be able to do that. Sometimes relevant either way. 
This is one of the more powerful cards of plot, I think, and mostly because of Arclight Phoenix. Uh, being able to plot at the turn before, and then on turn three say, hey, okay, I'm going to Highway Robbery, draw two, discard a card, and then da 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 cast two more spells. If you've got a Phoenix of the Graveyard, you get to bring it back. It's obviously a discard outlet for Phoenix, but getting a free spell in a Phoenix deck is really, really nice, and plot does let you do that. It's one of the decks where plot's going to maybe have the most impact. Um, we'll see how things go, how many effects like this they want, Kind of like not in a chart of course kind of era two mana spells the deck's just full of one mana spells right um but it's pretty interesting uh next up i have scorching shot um simple just very very straightforward red red high damage dark creature children's kind of like i don't want to say fell off but when you have like vein rippers and things like that like hey it does deal with vein ripper very efficient just removal spell nice slick shot show off uh, one red for one two with flying and haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus two plus O turn to turn, but has plot. Um, again, we have a bunch of different blue red stuff you can do in the format. Uh, Phoenix being chief among them at the moment. There's creativity. There's all sorts. There's there's a bunch of really good is it stuff you can do. You can play Drakes. You can play yeah. Um, but things like blue red prowess, where like you don't necessarily need to be all in on finding and getting Phoenix into your graveyard and enabling them. Uh, plot ability here lets you cast it. Obviously, it's got flying and haste, and then immediately start casting spells off it. So rather than just running out on turn two into a bolt or whatever, you can cast it, have some mana up, be able to cast a couple of cantrips or removal spells, or even hold things like spell pierce up later on as well and protect it. Um, but hey, it's a pretty cool one. See if it does anything. Into green, colossal rattle worm. I love that we've got desert stuff back. Um, I have a pile of power of promises somewhere, uh, but colossal rattle worm, one mana six five. Flash if you control a desert and trample, but if you exile it from your graveyard for one on a green, you can search your library for a desert card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So onto the battlefield is super, super powerful. The four mana for a six five is like super, super efficient, but no like other like type abilities really. Um, trample, nice, but the real like better is like, hey, if it's in your yard, you can use it as like a rampant growth for a desert. And there's some pretty cool deserts in the set. Dance of Tumbleweeds. One and a green, and again, there's another spree card. Um, you're like, okay, it's like a overcosted rampant growth. So it's either for a basic land or a desert card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Uh, and it all kind of depends on like how good the deserts are that you can get and how much synergy we have with them. And then I wanted to talk about the lands, and then we're going to go through uh, big score. So Arid Archway here is the most exciting one, I think. It's a carry land, but which I mean, enter the battlefield tapped, and when it enters, you have to return a land you control to its own hand. It doesn't have to be a different land, it can be this land. Um, if it's another desert that returns, you get to surveil one as well. There are a few different reasons I'm excited for this. Firstly, it's a desert, we have a bunch of different ways to tutor it. Uh, secondly, is we have things like splunking in the format, which lets lands enter the battlefield untapped, which really takes down the downside. And you're sending a land to your hand, you get to use the mana for that first, and even sometimes if you can reuse the land and have a bunch of ways to get additional land drops, that becomes an advantage. Um, and with this, you can kind of like we don't have Primeval Titan and Pioneer Explorer, right? We have Even World Hydra, finds a land, a couple of other creatures that find lands. Um, but we need some pretty interesting stuff here. Uh, and there's enough desert matter stuff for me to be like, okay, there's, I think, enough things for us to get something real. Um, and so I'm really excited to play with this, Splunking, uh, Field, and a few other different pieces and pieces. You can make a bunch of mana, and we'll see what we can do with it. All right, and now for the big score. This is a bonus set, I think you open it in normal, either play boosters or obviously empty to arena boosters. Um, we're not sure really how rare the cards are going to be at the moment. The prices in paper are actually fluctuating all over the place as well. But hey, some of these quite interesting for Pioneer Explorer as well. Starting with Grand Abolisher in white. A really nice reprint into Pioneer and Explorer for the first time. More a cyborg card than a main deck card. It's a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, not like super powerful stat line wise. But during your turn, your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. In particular, very powerful because we've recently had Cabinet Souls come into the format. So hey, they can't interact with this. And then all of a sudden, they can't interact with anything. At least on your turn. Really good versus control decks. Decks want to play on your turn a lot. It's the incredible versus like the Wandering Emperor in particular. Um, but yeah. Pretty interesting one, niche cyborg card, I think, like a couple of copies of, um, but we'll see what happens with it in the format. Next up, Harvester of Misery. So three black black for five four with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures get minus two minus two under the, until end of turn. So it cleans up a lot of like small creature boards, pretty nice. But then one in the black, discard it, target creature gets minus two minus two turn of turn. And so it's a really nice instant speed as well, um, removal spell uh, as an activated ability. So it's much harder for your opponent to interact with, 
which then, hey, it's in your graveyard. Maybe you want to do some stuff with it there. Obviously, like you look at modern, it's like the living end, but there's a couple of instances or things like that in older formats on Arena, like historic timeless, where hey, actually this is getting a bit more interesting. We don't have like a great like reanimator style deck in Pioneer Explorer. I'm not gonna count Grease Fang. The reanimation spells we have access to are like less good. We don't have reanimate. Timeless is getting it, but hey. Uh next up I've got molten duplication. So one in a red, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste under turn, and then you have to sacrifice it at the end step. There are effects like this already in Pioneer. Uh, but we don't have one like this on Arena. And so a cheap way to do this, especially with things like Jeskai Ascendancy, is probably the most exciting instance of this, where you can use it to get like a copy of a mana creature you have in play. Obviously it triggers and taps the mana creature you have in play, but also gives you a second one that also gets to make mana attack for that turn. Kind of doubles your mana for going off. Um, pretty interesting. All right, multicolor, we've got Pest Control. Uh, one of the most interesting cards, I think. One White and a black. Sorcery, destroy all non-land permanents of mana value, one or less, and then has cycling. Uh, Obliterates boards versus things like Convoke is a really interesting card, and the cycling as well means the opportunity cost of playing it is very, very low. Um, you could even play it in your main deck in something like Esper Control, or um, and just be like, okay, yeah, two mana to cycle at worst, but obviously can make a great cyborg card as well. Really interesting. Uh, of course it was going to be on here, but Lost Gite, one mana to play, one mana to equip, legendary equipment, when it deals damage, whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage, it gets a charge counter. Remove one charge counter to either untap a land, stop a creature from blocking, or put a counter on the equipped creature. I think people are either really high or really low on this card. I don't really understand. The problem I think with like being negative about it is that the opportunity cost is so low. It's one mana to play, one mana to quit. It's just super, super low as compared to like a sword or something like that. And the abilities are pretty powerful, like stopping things from blocking, the counters are obviously great, and the tapping lands can be really powerful, but the decks that want to necessarily attack with creatures don't necessarily care about the tapping lands, but hey. Um, in older formats, obviously in modern, you can tutor this up with Urza Saga, it makes it, again, pretty interesting. Uh, it's one I definitely keep an eye on. I'm quite excited to try it out, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't just uh, dismiss it out of hand. And lastly, Torpor Orb, a blast from the past, two mana artifact, Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Oh, this is a really powerful hate card. Uh, especially being colorless, um, it means that everybody has access to it as well. Uh, and so, hey, there are a bunch of pretty powerful creature decks in the format using creature abilities. Look at things like a Malia combo. That's probably the m main thing. Obviously, this is an effect Phoenix. Um, but hey, that is one area, or even the Discover creatures, uh, potentially. Um, but hey. Really, really powerful hate card. We'll definitely see playing some sideboards. Most of the creature decks do not like Torpor Orb. Um, and so, hey, it's a really nice one for sideboards and a really nice reprint to have in here. That is it. There's a bunch of really exciting cards. There are a bunch of things I obviously didn't talk about and maybe like missed over. Um, if there's anything you're like, hey, you definitely missed this. This card's incredible. Let me know in the comments as well. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things that I'm like excited to play with that aren't, I don't think are probably quite there in terms of like, is this going to be playable or not? We'll see. Um, yeah, set is really, really cool. I love the flavor personally. Um, I grew up in a town where every school was named after a cowboy, despite my accent. Um, and hey, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Very excited. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, subscribe, share it around. Uh, and yeah, can't wait for that to come out.